Hello YouTube, Sidekick here, with some first impression of the new Mariana's map. Um, there's a fair bit out there already on the map, so I'll just try and give you my take. Um, so that'll include flying some of the aircraft I like to fly, which of course are mostly in the Iron Bomber category. Uh, I'd like to talk a bit about the islands themselves and their place in air combat history, because I haven't heard a lot of people talking about that. And, and it is significant. And hopefully we'll also be able to take a look at the kinds of missions we might be able to construct on the map. And of course, um, you know, we're going to have to do some eye candy appreciation. Oh, and by the way, for longtime fans of the channel, you will get a chance to see me on video uh, fly the Huey for the first time. Not the first time I've flown it, but the first time I've actually recorded the track to share with people. So, uh, fine. Anyways, we're starting in the A-10 and uh, we're starting over Anderson Air Force Base which dominates the northern section of Guam, which is the largest and most southern island on the map. Uh, the map includes major islands uh, of Guam, Rota, Tinian, and Saipan. So we're just going to do a little tour of Guam here in the A-10. And I think it's important to take a look at the map kind of from two perspectives. One is just the eye candy perspective, because I do really think that um, this map is in some ways a real work of art, uh, and there's a lot of things on it that, that just need to be explored and appreciated uh, on that basis. And then, um, but the second thing that I do want to look at is to look at it as kind of an asset in DCS. What are the sorts of things that we might be able to do with it? What kinds of missions we can uh, construct on it? That sort of thing. Okay, I've flown south from Anderson now, and we're over the middle section of Guam, and we're coming up on the civilian airport. Uh, which is known as the Antonio B. Juan Pat International Airport. It's named after the first delegate from the territory of Guam to the U.S. House of Representatives, just in case you were wondering. It's also the former site of the U.S. Naval Air Station, but now it is a civilian airport, although it does still host some military aircraft from time to time. And there it is right there. You can see it's still a pretty substantial uh, airfield, not quite like uh, Anderson Field but uh, it is definitely uh, fairly uh, significant runways there. And you can see it's close to the water, which is obviously why it was a U.S. Naval Air Station problem. So you can get an idea, you know, look, uh, as far as eye candy is concerned, what uh, beautiful modeling this is. Everything from the water with the reflections and the sunlight um, to the uh, details of the airport, but also, you know, as we fly along and over some of these uh, urban areas, um, these really are very well done. They, they don't look at all like um, the early maps in DCS where things look very cookie cutter, uh, like there was a limited number of buildings that had just sort of been uh, plunked down in, in um, different directions. Uh, and that's unfair. I mean, the, the modeling in DCS has always been pretty good, but that, the urban areas, I think, have uh, always been a bit of a challenge. Okay, so as you can see, we've switched now to the Huey, so we can get up close and personal with some of this uh, terrain. We took off from uh, from the uh, Anthony B. Wanpat Airport, and now we're just uh, looking around what I think is pretty much the civilian urban area of Guam. Um, there's a fair bit of uh, buildings in the northern section as well, but I think they're pretty much associated with the Air Force Base. So we're just taking a look so you can get up close and personal and see I'm saying about the variety of urban terrain that's been modeled and, and how the trees and uh, the water have been uh, integrated in seamlessly. You've got a nice uh, beach that we're flying over here. Uh, it really is pretty impressive. And then again, when you add that, the modeling of the water and the colors are just amazing. There's a beachfront condo, obviously, on the left with a full parking lot behind it. So from an eye candy perspective, uh, I mean, it, it really just, it's very impressive to me. I mean, um, now, some folks in VR have been uh, a bit concerned that their frame rates have taken a bit of a hit on this map. Uh, I haven't tried it in VR yet. Uh, my frame rates in 2D have been acceptable, even on pretty high graphic settings, but I do have to admit I have a fairly high-end uh, system now. Okay, so let's just uh, continue on here just a little while longer in the Huey again so you can take a look at how this all comes together and now we're in a slightly more shadowed area and we're flying over a residential area and you can see I think there are similar houses that are repeated over and over again uh, but it's pretty hard to tell unless you're really looking for it and uh, you know just in general it looks very realistic I think 
bodes well for doing some urban flying in the uh, in the Huey. There's probably lots of interesting missions that you could make uh, in an urban environment, even some, uh, you know, uh, search and rescue or, or medevac or those sorts of things. Just a sec, there's one thing I have to do with this island out here in the middle of the bay. I think any self-respecting Huey pilot could pass that opportunity up. And then, I, yeah, we come out flying straight at a little beachfront resort there so we can get, take a close look at that. And take a look at the colors in the water there, uh, and the modeling of the beach and the scenery. Uh, I mean, really, this is, uh, this is something that we just don't have in DCS up until now. And I think the uh, DCS maps have been getting better and better. I mean, the Syria map is certainly uh, uh, great, and, but the Marianas really takes it to another level. Um, you can tell that there are sort of common assets that have been used again and again, but it's uh, very difficult to see unless you spend a lot of time looking at the urban modeling. It looks very natural. Um, there are parking lots, there are malls, there are uh, warehouses, there are residential areas. They all have cars. Um, it, looks, it looks very realistic. In terms of what kind of varied terrain is available now, we're uh, really over the southern part of Guam here. And you can see we do have some rolling hills with uh, tropical forests, maybe quasi-jungle on them. And maybe there's some interesting things we could be doing here. Uh, it could stand in as an analog maybe for uh, Vietnam or for uh, other Southeast Asian locations if we wanted to, do, uh, wanted to do a mission that had something to do with that. So while we're flying around getting a look at some of the eye candy down here in the southern part of the map, let's talk a little bit more about the Marianas. Um, the islands modeled in the map are actually the most southern islands of the Marianas chain, which stretches about 2,500 kilometers to the north. Um, the other islands are much smaller, and these four that are modeled in the map are actually the only four that are inhabited. The Marianas chain is actually the tops of mostly extinct volcanoes, uh, rising from the floor of the Pacific Ocean. Um, they form the eastern boundary of the Philippine Sea, and farther to their east is the deepest point in any ocean on the planet, which is called the Marianas Trench. As I alluded to, um, the islands have a pretty strong place in air combat history dating back to the Second World War, uh, mainly due to their location, which is close, close to both the Philippines and Japan, and, and also because their terrain is quite suitable for large airfields. Uh, in 1941, they were held by the United States. On the day after Pearl Harbor, they were invaded by the Empire of Japan, and they fell to the Japanese in 1942. In 1944, the U.S. Navy and Marines arrived to take them back. But maybe before we go on with the history lesson, uh, we'll switch islands and switch aircraft. So we're taking off uh, on the island of Rota in an A-29B Super Tucano, which I will point out is a free community mod. You can download it anytime and give it a try and do this flight yourself. Uh, because that's another important thing about the Marianas map that we uh, should point out, is it is free. 100% free, entirely free. Um, before uh, going on too much about any of the limitations that, that uh, people might see in it, uh, we do need to acknowledge that it, it is a completely free asset, and if it doesn't interest you, you don't have to fly on it. Uh, and if it, there are things you can do with it, um, then you get to do that regardless of what else you have invested in DCS, and I think that's a point that just absolutely needs to be acknowledged. Now, uh, Rota is the smallest of the four named islands that are modeled in the Marianas map. It's about 90 kilometers off the northern coast of Guam, um, and it's a little bit more than that south of Tinian. So it's, uh, it's kind of out in the middle of the ocean. It's not a very big island. It's only about 20 kilometers by 10 or something like that. We've taken off from the airfield, which is on the northern side of the island, and now we're flying over the southern part, which is kind of a southern highland here. You can see uh, Guam off there in the distance. Well, there's definitely some interesting terrain here. It's a small island, so it would be a, a short mission, but uh, there's definitely some interesting things we could do here. Actually, it's kind of an interesting spot to fly the Super Tucano over, because it's the kind of terrain that it was kind of designed for, with uh, little knife back ridges and lots of uh, forest and small areas that you might need to get into an attack. It's good for an agile light attack plane like the Tucano. So take a little look along this ridge here. And once again, just appreciate the absolutely spectacular visuals on this map. I mean, that's just an awesome view right there. And 
And then coming up as we go around the corner here is an interesting little feature with this little uh, promontory that kind of sticks off the southern end of the island. You can see maybe having an interesting little scenario built around that with some insurgents holed up there and that sort of thing. So there's some, uh, some interesting opportunities, I think, on this little island. Well, while we keep flying around here, let's uh, talk a little bit more about the history of the Marianas. As we said, in 1944, they were occupied by uh, the Empire of Japan and the U.S. Navy and the Marines arrived in June to take them back because they were uh, seen as highly strategic because uh, the, U the new uh, B-29 bombers that the U.S. was deploying at the time flying from the Marianas would actually be able to reach the home islands of Japan. So the battle for the Marianas in June 1944 included an event known in the U.S. Navy as the Great Marianas Turkey Shoot, uh, which is where U.S. naval aviators basically completely broke the back of the Imperial Japanese Navy Air Arm. This was part of a larger battle uh, known as the Battle of the Philippine Sea, which was really the first major naval engagement in more than a year, uh, where U.S. pilots uh, basically proved that in that time they and their aircraft had become an elite and battle-tested force while the Japanese had kind of been shut up in port waiting for the battle and getting a little bit rusty. In two days of fighting, the U.S. shot down or seriously damaged almost 500 Japanese aircraft. They sank a Japanese carrier and damaged three more while losing only about 125 aircraft of their own and taking no significant damage to any capital ships. And in addition, two Japanese carriers were actually sunk by Japanese or by U.S. submarines. Most importantly, from a strategic perspective, the Imperial Japanese Navy was basically unable to prevent or even significantly interfere with the U.S. invasion of the islands, which were eventually secured in August of 1944. The Japanese responded with a campaign of bombing, flying twin-engine bombers from nearby island bases, and the islands were defended actually by a force of P-47, so that's something that maybe we can model in DCS. Despite destroying a number of the B-29s on the ground, the Japanese lost more aircraft in the air than they destroyed, and ultimately they could not prevent the buildup of the strategic bombing force on the islands. And so it's from these islands that the U.S. would initiate its bombing campaign against the Japanese home islands starting in November of 1944. But so, before we continue with that story, I think we're just about wrapped up our tour of Rota here, so um, let's switch to another island. So, here we are on the island of Tinian, and we're taking off in our trusty A4E Skyhawk. Another free community mod, I will point out. Now, uh, you can see there on the horizon, we're looking more or less north, and that's the island of Saipan, which is just off of Tinian. So, Tinian's 120 kilometers or so farther north of Rhoda. We're just taking off out here, uh, out of the airfield, which is in the northern half of the island. We're coming left, and what we're going to see here is the remains of what is known as the North Field, uh, and it plays a part in uh, the remaining history of our story. Um, so, just briefly, basically, um, the U.S. started deploying B-29s uh, to the islands in November of 1944, when the facilities were complete and, and when the B-29s were ready. Um, and although the campaign of bombing against Japan struggled at first, um, it would eventually reach devastating effectiveness by the summer of 1945, well, basically by about April. Um, B-29 firebombing of the home islands, in effect, uh, destroyed significant portions of all of Japan's major cities uh, and resulted in civilian deaths uh, numbering more than 125,000 people. And then, of course, uh, the islands cemented their place in history on the 6th of August, 1944, when the Enola Gay rolled down one of those runways down there, carrying the first atomic bomb, which it duly dropped on Hiroshima a little over six hours later. Three days after that, another B-29 named Boxcar rolled down the same runway with a second atomic bomb, which was dropped on Nagasaki. Now, based on those events alone, uh, the only time that nuclear weapons have ever been dropped in anger, uh, the Marianas certainly deserve their place in aviation combat history. So let's just take a little bit look at uh, Tinian here. Tinian is probably the island that has, I'm going to say, the least interesting terrain. There's a little bit of urban built up area, and there's some more rural area, but it's pretty flat. It's some, some cliffs that are pretty dramatic over the sea here. Um, but there isn't really a, a whole lot 
going on on land. Although, again, it might make for an interesting scene if you wanted to. Uh, I can see doing some interesting, maybe, um, helicopter operations in this area. There's some interesting little landing zones that would be kind of a challenge to get into. And now we're coming back past uh, the current day airport. And uh, you can see the built up area of Tinian there off on the left. I think there's a little harbor there. And then out in front of us here is an interesting feature that I think uh, might at least figure in my plans for the Marianas Islands. Now there's an island off the coast here, uh, off the southern coast. And to me, it just seems like it might be an excellent spot to put a bombing range on. Sped up so we're getting a little closer. You can see it's a lovely size. It's reasonably flat. Uh, it's right off the coast of Tinian pretty close to the airport, so I can definitely see taking off out of that airport and then having an interesting an interesting bombing range target set up here and use this as kind of a, an air weapons range. So that seems like it might be kind of fun. Take a quick diving pass. You can see it might set up really nicely to have some targets set up along the length like that. Certainly uh, would be more picturesque than the bombing range we used on the Persian Gulf. For months and months. So, anyways, I'm I'm thinking that that uh, that may feature in my plans for the Marianas. Anyways, I plan to start working on uh, putting a bombing range on that island soon, and of course, I'll make that available in my dis Discord channel and uh, make a video about it when we get done. So uh, now we'll just take our A4 back home to Tinian, and I think that's probably about all we need to look at Tinian. Now let's go to the last island. So. Here we are taking off uh, out of the airfield on Saipan in our 88B carrier. Um, take a look at the last island in the chain. So this is the farthest north island. It's it's a little bit bigger than Tinian, not much, but it's uh, much uh, longer and thinner. And um, for my money, I think it's also probably the most developed uh, of the four islands. Guam certainly has a bigger settlement on it, but I think more of the area uh, of the island on Saipan is actually covered by uh, urban area. We're just going out to the east and we'll turn to the north, come around and, and have a look. So the southern part of Saipan is, is fairly flat and that's where the airfield is and it's that area. It's dominated by the airfield. And then rising out of that southern area there's kind of a center ridge uh, of some high ground and then uh, the ridge runs along the island and then it comes down to this interesting feature here at the northern end just want to fly by and take a little bit of a look at. Once again, you can see from this perspective, uh, you know, what a pretty sight that is. You can see the little central highland there. The thing about Saipan is that it is pretty well developed, so I don't think you're going to be flying any missions here that don't have to do with urban areas, more or less. Even the more uh, forested areas still seem to have some some amount of urban settlement interspersed, but there's this little interesting feature here at the very northern end of Saipan. I heard somebody else referring to Suicide Cliff or Suicide Hill. I wonder if this is what they were talking about. It's an interesting little feature. I'm sure that uh, make that figure in an interesting uh, scenario at some point. And there's some interesting little uh, parts down there if you wanted to uh, Simulate an a, a air landing uh, attack with Hueys. There's some interesting little, little landing zones down there, I'm sure. And uh, definitely interesting terrain to fly around again. The cliffs are pretty fantastic. So, and then another feature of the islands, which I found uh, tends to dominate, uh, you can see a golf course there. Uh, in my quick survey of the islands, uh, I have found six airfield and uh, six golf courses. So uh, that brings up the thought that, uh, you know, perhaps one of the things that, uh, missions that you may want to fly if you own a Huey is, you know, you can always simulate taking senior officers out from airfields uh, at, to the golf course and landing on the 18th green. That would seem like an interesting mission that someone should make. We're just taking a look here now at, at Saipan, as you can see, it's, it's interesting and varied terrain. It is fairly built up though, uh, though not as densely populated as, uh, as you see on Guam. And here now we've uh, switched again to the Huey and just take a little bit uh, lower and slower look at some of the uh, center part of the island here. So we're just crossing over that center highland. You can see that even up the slopes of, uh, of the mountain though, there continues to be 
a um, certain amount of development. It's like there's houses all the way up the mountain and some roads that lead up there. Of course, uh, interspersed with the Durger golf courses, as I have said. And then we're just going to go over the ridge down the other side, take a look at the urban area on the other side. So, just to continue the story of the Marianas, um, after the Second World War, the islands remained in U.S. hands, obviously, and Guam became a U.S. territory. Uh, the remainder of the chain actually became something that's called the U.S. Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. The U.S. has maintained a significant amount of military facilities on the islands ever since the Second World War. Anderson Air Force Base is really the main one of those installations, and it has hosted strategic bomber groups uh, continuously since the Second World War. Uh, during the 50s, it was host to a series of U.S. strategic bombers, including B-47s and B-36s. Uh, it also hosted a number of fighter units, flying F-86s and F-102s. During the Vietnam War, the Marianas, again, were very much part of a significant air campaign as B-52s and their supporting air-to-air uh, -air tanking aircraft flew from Anderson Air Force Base in attacks against North Vietnam pretty much from 1965 until the end of the conflict. Um, Anderson Air Force Base continues to operate today, uh, and it's hosted strategic bomber groups continuously since the end of the Vietnam conflict. Typically, the base hosts a squadron of B-52s uh, or B-1 Lancers, although B-2s have been based out of the islands uh, at various times as well. The complement is normally rounded out by an air mobility squadron, uh, usually some miscellaneous helicopter units, and also, uh, recently, uh, a Global Hawk unmanned reconnaissance group. So that pretty much concludes our historical tour of the Mariana Islands, and, and I think we've basically seen pretty much all of them as well in DCS. So what does all of that amount to? Um, as I said, the Marianas are definitely interesting to anybody who's interested in the history of, of air combat, that's for sure. Uh, it's also true that uh, uh, as a free asset, this map is really just uh, an amazing thing to look at, an amazing thing to fly over, and I imagine there'll be lots of people who probably, like me, will spend some time just flying around the map and for no other reason than that. Um, but, you know, beyond that, um, what is the Marianas map going to be good for? I mean, you know, kind of why is it here? Um, it is a map that is an awful lot of ocean and not a lot of terrain. Uh, the terrain that is there is modern terrain in an area where there's really really pretty hard to construct a scenario in which the Mariana Islands are going to be the center of any kind of armed conflict in the near future. Now, they, they certainly were in the past, but, but that's not the period of time that's modeled on the island. So you couldn't go back and do, and if you had the aircraft carriers in the aircraft, which you may at some point, uh, you couldn't go back and recreate the World War II Marianas campaign with the current map. So, so what's it good for? Well, I think maybe that's kind of asking the wrong question. Uh, I think if I was a developer of an air of an air combat simulation, uh, and the only free map that I offered had been one that was what is it now, 12 or 15 years old, been around for a long time. Definitely, um, when you compare it to the newer maps, is definitely dated. And and I wanted to provide another you know free asset for people to use. Um, I would think it would be a sensible thing to do to pick a map where make a large map, but you didn't have to do an awful lot of work, um, you know, to pick some islands to model. If you pick some islands that happen to be pretty famous uh, from an air combat perspective, that would probably be a good idea too. So I think that that has more to do with why we have the Marianas than anything else. Um, I think it's definitely a place that a lot of people will find ways to make missions, certainly if you're uh, a naval air warfare kind of guy and you uh, spend a lot of time on supercarrier. There's lots of options here. Um, there's lots of what-if scenarios. I mean, there's six airfields, um, as well as six golf courses. So there's lots of things you could do with that. So I think the Marianas will be interesting, but more to the point, I think they just add some flavor to DCS uh, in the basic game. Uh, can't say it enough times, they are completely free. So it's an interesting map. I'm certainly going to spend some time here. I've already got some ideas. Uh, I expect a lot of you will well, I hope you've enjoyed this little tour, not only of the islands, but of their history and their, their place in the annals of air combat. And for now, this is going to be Sidekick, signing off.